What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Joshua Martin. I'm a filmmaker and content creator. And as of right now, I've been making a lot of Fujifilm X-H2S content. So make sure to check out the playlist in the description. Also, if you're new here, let me know who you are in the comments and tell me about the project that you're working on. This video I'm going to share with you is the best rigging options you can buy, in my opinion, for the Fujifilm X-H2S. And that is the Fujifilm Unified Accessory Kit from Wooden Camera. Now, take note, I am not a budget-friendly filmmaker, and so this does come with a hefty price. We'll talk about the price later after we get through everything you get for this kit, if you choose the larger kit, that is. Now, this is a sleek cage. It's a full wraparound which hugs the camera. It attaches via the bottom quarter 20 and the camera's hot shoe. Now take note, if you have large hands, the camera and cage will feel very comfortable to hold as is. If you don't, you might feel as though it's a little bit cumbersome and large. Something else to take note of is that this cage is made to live on this camera once. <laughs> there is no quick and easy access to take the camera in and out of this cage. This is a two-piece Arca Swiss dovetail that can be removed and detached directly to the bottom of the cage, parallel to the bottom of the camera which I use for vlogging setups or just I have it straight on so I can take it on and off my uh, tripod or my little mini tripod. You need to have a tool ready and available if you want to make changes to the Arca Swiss or just taking the camera out in general. Like I said, it's not a quick thing. You had to unscrew everything to take it in and out. It would have been a nice touch to have a toolless rotating system for the Arca to go parallel or perpendicular to the camera cage. There are detachable cable clamps for the USB-C and HDMI, but I removed them because it got a little uh, cumbersome with the flaps. So that's my advice. I would just not use the clamping systems. Um, if you do, definitely use the HDMI, but um, the, the flaps just got out of the way. I wish the flaps were kind of removable in a sense that can be detached and, and reattached, but they're not. Here's some other notable features. Um, this has location tabs, so the camera is not fishing around once it's in there. Once it's locked in, it stays put. The focal plane markings, this is handy because it shows you where the sensor plane is. And there's a ton of quarter 20s and 3 8 mounting points and airy locking pinholes all over, which I love airy locking pinholes. <laughs> Something else to take note of is that the cage takes up your only hot shoe on the camera and the cage does not provide an extra one. So you have to purchase an extra cold shoe adapter. Wooden camera makes two of these, a high rise and then a low profile, which can be rotated left or right. It would have been nice to have this actually built in um, for an option for external cold shoe, but there has to be some extra rigging you need to have with the external cold shoe adapters. <laughs> Lastly, the space that hovers over the buttons for the ISO and white balance, it is a bit tight and it's not easy to get your fingers through. My workaround is actually remapping those function buttons to the D-pad or any other bu button at the top to make faster access to the back. The base plate is pretty much straightforward. It has a removable bottom plate that if you don't have a dovetail system, you can just attach a normal Manfrotto uh, plate to this and then you can have it on the tripod. But if you remove this plate, it reveals the space for the dovetail. The mini top handle has become one of my favorites of recent. It's comfortable, it locks with the airy locking pins. I have it on my 6K Pro cage as well. Um, I did wish there was a natal rail version of this, but right now it's a 3 8 screw and they have these little built-in locking pins that are into the cage. You have to kind of unscrew them. Um, so again, you need more tools, but uh, once it's in there, it's pretty sturdy. and I'd, tend to have it reversed the long way or the back way depending how I try to balance my rig. Now the monitoring mount does not come with the top handle but it's a really simple and, and neat monitoring mount. Uh, it's an anti-locking twist which needs to be standard on everything um, but this allows you to just slip on the monitor and you can it uses friction to move it up and down uh, and it's a thumb screw as well. 
Um, again, I think it needed to have like a Allen wrench tool to kind of tighten it down even more because it, it does get loose with heavier monitors. Uh, so tightening it down with just your thumb isn't always reassuring. The kit comes with steel rods and steel rods are the best hands down. I don't like carbon fiber. I don't like any other flimsier ones because as you're building bigger rigs, you want rods that won't bend. <laughs> and I've had a few that's bent. Now 15 mil rods are still small, but a 15 mil stainless steel rod is super sturdy. If anything, just get that. Included is a dummy battery to a articulating battery plate, which I power with my Anton Bauer batteries. Pretty straightforward, super trustworthy. On the battery plate itself, there are two DTAP breakouts. Now this is obviously not part of the kit itself, but I did pick up the cooling fan for the Fujifilm X-H2S. Um, I wish they just included this without it being an additional charge, but I actually haven't had the need to use the cooling fan. Um, it's just a safety, but also kind of a waste of my money. Now, once it's all built out, you can put the screen completely closed if you wanted to, or have it out off to the side. My only concern is that I wish there was some sort of cage that can be built around this screen so it won't wiggle or jiggle. <laughs> jiggle, jiggle. Um, because again, if this snaps off, then you're kind of ruined your camera. But uh, yeah, so that's the whole kit, y'all. I know, don't, just, I know, I messed up, you know, how it goes, anyway. Now, I know you're asking yourself the question, why would you even choose wooden camera over all the other options that are out there that are much, much cheaper? Well, here's how I like to think about it. And no, I'm not trying to convince you, but just hear me out. So it's like choosing between a Volkswagen and an Audi. Both are vehicles, both get you from point A to point B. However, the experience I think is different. Now we all have brands that we admire um, based off the products that they offer and oftentimes that we use. Now, early on in my filmmaking career, I viewed wooden camera as Audi, the top-notch luxury camera accessory brand that I've always wanted to get my hands on because I know they provide quality gear. And I worked the ladder over the years, so buying a lot of small rig parts, Nitsi, Tilta, up to the point where I started to add wooden camera gear to replace all my other stuff. So for me, the rigging experience, functionality, and the aesthetic of the gear I was buying from wooden camera mattered to me the most. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. All right, that's it for this video. Catch you guys on the next one.